Welcome back YouTube to my channel Injection Molding Skills and More. This is David Lucas. Today I wanted to go over the four variables in injection molding and what they are. So if you see me going moving my head to the side a little bit I'm reading what I wrote down actually and then plus I got the the paperwork that I wanted to show you the different four variables on processing. So let's just jump right into it real quick. Um, in injection molding, you have a uh, molding process. You can have ultimate control by these four processing variables. Uh, primarily, they're going to be heat, pressure, flow, and cooling. Okay, so if you look at this, this diagram that I put together, you have temperature, then it goes to flow, then it goes to pressure, then it goes to cooling. Well, your cooling like, takes up almost half of your total overall cycle, more or less. So you start with your heats, then you start with, you go to flow, like your fill time. So on all these, more or less, what you could do is you could take these variables, have it set up on one press, and actually take it to another press, use the same settings, and almost make the same identical part if your barrel is about the same size. So what I always try to tell everybody is, if you have a barrel size that's the same, and you're using the same tonnage of press, these variables, if you use these variables, you can take the same process that you ran on another press and put it in another press. Don't matter if the press is different or not. It does not matter. This is what's going to actually make your part, actually. So it, it, you, you got to look at it like this, okay? So let's say you have, if a molder could look at the, the process, actually the injection molding part, let's say they look into it and they can see the plastic, the the plastics point of view of how the plastic goes into the mold goes around the walls flows and then you're packing it out more or less so think about it that way so the temperature you use going into the mold the flow of how fast you getting it into the into the mold that determines the pressure of how much pressure you're actually using to put into the mold then your cooling time your cooling time is going to be you know you, there's going to be a bunch of differences on your cooling time now you can go we can get really deep into this because you have cooling channels you have turbulent flow you have all this other stuff that goes into your actually cooling but what we want to talk about is just them four variables so these four variables you can actually use on any injection molding machine now we do have out there like you have oh, hundreds of different damn molding machines more or less with tons of different controls some of them are overkill most of them we don't use like you might have five stages of injection you might have five stages of hold i mean they're overkill really all you have to have is you have to have plastic temperature plastic flow rate plastic pressure and plastic cooling rate or time so those are the four variables that you really want to use going forward okay if you can use those you can take it and go from one press to another press if you're real close on the fill time and the pressures and your heats are pretty much the same you can always change that cooling time to make your cycle time a lot faster like i said there's a lot you can get into on that um but like you say what you want to do is on your temperatures it's going to be controlled by like your you know you have a it's a determination by um your barrel temperature screw design screw check valve design uh, screw rotation speed, back pressure, resistance time, plastic temperature. Um, I mean, these are all different variables that you're going to have. And the best way to check this is to take a priometer, purge a bunch of plastic out, check that purge over like a bunch of different times, just to check and see if you're being consistent on your melt temperature. Once you're consistent on your melt temperature, then the next thing you want to do, you know, you're going to take all your pack and hold off, and what you're going to do is you're going to just fill the part out with fill. So you're going to use your first stage and you're going to fill out that part until you're about 95 to 98% full. This is going to be your fill time more or less because you want to fill it that position from, from first stage all the way down to transfer position. That is your fill time more or less because then you don't want to turn your pack and hold on yet. So what you're doing is you, that fill rate is, is a position of, okay, this is how much material I'm filling into the part. You want it to be about 95 to 98% full. 
then once you got it there then you're going to take half of whatever that pressure is because then now you're going down to the pressure so we already got the temperature you already got the flow you already know what your fill time is going to be so now you're looking at your pressure so that pressure whatever that pressure is let's say it's a thousand you're going to cut that in half and that's where you're going to start out on your on your pack and hold okay so you want to be half of that sometimes it's going to be lower sometimes it's going to be higher it just depends on the part when you look at the part so the plastic pressure whatever you do in that actually from here we're filling it at, at a thousand psi we're dropping down to 500 psi on pack and hold okay the determination of how long you're going to pack and hold and how long you hold that therefore is you know we, you can go into a whole nother segment on this as far as gate freeze and and stuff like that you can do a bunch of different studies to tell how much time do you hold it under pack and hold the thing is is you want to use your temperature you want to go to flow then you want to go to pressure then your last thing is your cooling now your cooling like i said takes up almost half of your process uh, overall cycle time this is where you can cut it down like um you can actually have your mold open close ejectors your cores or whatever fire quick to get the part off but your cooling time is what actually makes the dimensions of the part so if you run it too fast or anything like that you can get warp you can get the i mean the, all kinds of different problems you could actually have with the cooling if you don't cool it correctly so like i said these are the four variables that you can take anywhere on any machine it doesn't matter if it's an older machine or a newer machine if you can get these settings pretty close like let's say you're running 400 you know let, let's say you're running a polypropylene material your melt temperature you want to stay within 380 to 450 degrees so let's say we want it at 425 and that's where we want it to be so you keep your melt at 425 let's say we're filling a part that's a four pound part okay we're filling it in five seconds okay you want that you want this to be five seconds or, or close to that and then the pressure it's taking us a thousand psi to fill the part out then we're dropping down from that pressure on first stage down to pack and hold to 500 okay and then our cooling time let's say we're at 35 or you know 40 seconds of cooling time so overall your whole cycle time is going to be about around 50 to 60 second cycle okay you can take that same process and take it to another press you'd be ready to go um me personally this is where i've always started at first whenever you go to having a brand new tool what i would do is i'd, I'd get a brand new tool and i'd go ahead and i'd start off with getting the clamp set getting the ejector set getting all that other stuff set then you you calculate what your shot size is going to be you always are doing your temperature and your plastic flow or your two first things you always got to do anyway so what you want to do is you want to get get the shot size pretty close keep your transfer really high <clears throat> no hole no pack pressure whatsoever and then you want to go ahead and start filling it until you get it about 95 to 98 percent full then you're going to take that once you get it to where you think you're good there and you still got a good cushion amount in front of the screw then you're going to go ahead and you're going to add your hold pressure or pack pressure to it take your time and put your time low like you put probably three seconds five seconds of hold time on there because you don't know what your hold time is going to be actually until you do like a gate free study or you have you know like most vendors will send you like okay well this is what it sets up at so you you can actually do it that way but what i would do is start off at a low number like three to five seconds fill the part out make sure you're dimensionally good make sure you're still holding a really good cushion and then get the lowest hold pressure that you can get to where your part is still really good and then you know after that then you're going to do your cooling time and once you do your cooling time like i said it's going to vary on your cooling time all the time so this is another uh illustration this is a pie graph that i put together you can see on here that the cooling time takes up almost all of it so you have you know your ejector you have clamp open and close you have fill then you have pack and hold then you have cooling rate all the way then you open up eject so you can see this this graph shows you almost almost every job that we run out in the industry cooling is the biggest biggest factor okay but like i'm saying if you take that fill time to whatever press you go to as far as them four variables these four variables if you take these with you to any press and you have 
let's say you got 425 here you have you know five seconds here you have a thousand here and then 500 on hold and then let's say you have 35 and 40 here if that's a starting point that you can have to take to the next press with you then you'll be a lot more uh, ahead of yourself because what you're trying to do is you're always trying to think of ways to make um, the part the same every single time no matter what you want a repeatability on a process so whenever you make a process let's say you have a 500 ton press and it's a Nisi or or a Engel or whatever they're all different but they all have the same standard you know sled in inject material into the mold you know open mold up it had they all have the same steps that you'd want in a molding machine so they're just all different you know different pressures different things so on a lot of this stuff you you really have to have like your barrels have to be really calibrated you know your machine has to have the right pressure calibrations done to it so a lot goes into all this but if you start with these four variables i'm telling you you you'll be a lot more ahead of yourself than you think i always look at it like this if, if i get a, a brand new tool i'm always thinking okay well how's that material going to flow in there how's it going to go once it hits the face of the part does it go down the side walls how does it go into the mold so you're always thinking about that and you always think okay well if i make this change what does it affect down the road on another change so that's what you got to look at so um i hope you guys enjoyed this video um if you could please like share and subscribe um i appreciate all the comments and the feedback uh, if you guys could let me know what you thought of this video, if it was informative or not. Um, again, uh, in the next couple of weeks, I'll have like videos going over troubleshooting skills on like flash, um, jetting, warp, burn marks, weld lines, sink marks, just anything that you can think of. And then maybe we'll get over some um, machine controls and stuff like that. So if you guys would, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.